right into item number eight, public hearings. Notices have been published, posted, and mailed. We're going to hold a public hearing, waive the first reading, and introduce an ordinance of the City of San Bruno, adding Chapter 12.96195 to the San Bruno Municipal Code, which creates the Glenview G Rebuild Overlay Zone and associated development regulations for the properties damaged or destroyed by the Glenview Fire and amends the zoning map to rezone the properties damaged or, de or destroyed by the fire to R1G. Staff, please. Thank you, and good evening, Honorable Mayor and City Council. Um, as you remember, back in October, the City Council gave direction to staff to prepare ordinance amendments in order to simplify and expedite the rebuilding process related to the Glenview neighborhood. Staff has prepared these ordinance changes for which are attached to the staff report and also presented these to the Planning Commission last week, and the Planning Commission forwarded these to you with a favorable recommendation. Regarding the current process, people who want to add on to their no new home or want to build a new home basically fall into one of two categories, homes that fit within the development regulations and homes that choose to exceed one of the development regulations. For homes that fit within the development regulations, the process will remain unchanged. They can submit plans to the Community Development Department, and at that time, we will do the structural review as well as the architectural review at the same time. Structurally, the homes must be consistent with the California Building Codes, and from an architectural standpoint, the homes must be consistent with the residential design guidelines. However, for the homes that do choose to exceed a development standard, um, the process will be changed as a result of this ordinance amendment. First is the approval body. As the Council knows now, if you choose to see the development regulation like floor area ratio, lock coverage, height, the current process is that you first are heard by the Architectural Review Committee meeting, and after that meeting, they forward it to the Planning Commission, which has the final decision authority. And they make sure that there's neighborhood compatibility findings, that your home's consistent with the residential design guidelines, and a number of other findings. What this ordinance and memo would do is take out the Planning Commission requirement and st simply make the Architectural Review Committee the final approval body. The same rules will apply. You still need, be, still need to be consistent with the residential design guidelines, still to make all the same compatibility findings, but it will cut the review time in about half. Um, regarding public noticing, neighbors will still get a chance to comment uh, on any of the homes that uh, exceed a development regulation. What will change is instead of it going to the newspaper, uh, publication in a newspaper which is costly as well as adds on a little bit of time. There will be, all the plans will be posted on our website. Neighbors can comment on them. We will also notify the immediate neighborhoods as well as a, as a wider range of neighborhoods, when, a wider, wider range of neighbors when these applications um, come before us. And it will be the same process. Architectural Review Committee will hear the neighborhood's comments and take those into consideration when they make their findings. Uh, the third thing is uh, regarding nonconforming situations. And what a legal on, legally nonconforming situation is, it's commonly known as something that's grandfathered in. Basically, a development regulation that was built before the current codes. Um, in this neighborhood, there were few. These were developed in the 50s and 60s, and a majority of our development regulations are the same now as they were then. The most common things that were considered nonconformities are three foot setbacks from the side yard. Uh, property line where five, uh, five feet is required, as well as slightly smaller garages. Uh, our current code requires that these go all the way up to the Planning Commission. If a house is destroyed by a fire, in order to continue that nonconformity, these code changes would allow the Community Development Director to approve those during the building review process. Regarding the method of implementation, this is an overlay zone, and what an overlay zone means is that it will just apply to these 55 properties in the Glenview neighborhood that were either destroyed or uh, severely damaged by the fire. So people who are going through major construction process will be able to uh, apply this code. Um, we sent out a neighborhood comment. Uh, we received few comments. They were uh, all supportive. The one question that we got was, how are you going to make sure that these homes are compatible with the existing neighborhood, be even with this new expedited process? And I think the simple explanation is, the rules have not changed. They'll still have to be compatible with the residential design guidelines. There'll still be neighborhood comment allowed. And your home will still have to be compatible with the neighborhood. Um, if the council chooses to do the first reading tonight, the second reading will happen in December, and the ordinance will go into effect in mid-January. So with that, I could take any questions. Any questions of staff? Okay. If you might, if I must, uh, what you explain the uh, the public notice that'll 
the wider range? Or what, what would that actually no, be? It'll be the same range. Actually, in the ordinance itself, it says that we have to notify the immediate neighborhood neighbors. <laughs> but what we'll do is we'll use the same 300-foot notice. But what we'll make sure to do is instead of using the county assessor rolls, we'll use the updated contact information that the neighbors have provided since people uh, have you know, new addresses that may not be forwarding correctly. Any other questions for staff? All right, this time we'll open the public hearing. Anyone from the public uh, like to speak to the council on this item? All right, seeing none, um, if we close the public hearing, you're going to be precluded from uh, talking or asking questions on this. Motion. Move to close public hearing. Second. Motion second to close the public hearing. Any question? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So carried. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Mayor, I'll, yes. I'll, I'm going to start this discussion and get over. Uh, I think the main key here is that that we don't. The main reason for our review process is to scrutinize designs and uh, and give the public, give the neighbors, the 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 adjacent uh, adjacent neighbors and the the in the area a, a a chance to review ahead of time what uh, what's being proposed. And in some cases, it may affect us, uh, some immediate neighbors uh, uh, directly, and, and that gives them an opportunity to voice their opinion. And I think it's worked since 1989. Um, I also recognize that these 55 families have been through enough, and you know, and it's still going to be a long road for them. And uh, I think it's great that they would consider. Uh, and, and plan to rebuild and and start the the next part of their lives here in San Bruno. What I don't want is I'm concerned about what uh, what may be proposed with no context. Say a prop, a, you know, a home gets proposed where there are no homes there now. Uh, it's like the first home in you know in a in a track development where no other homes are you know you see. Today we get additions, we get homes, infill homes, and you have a neighborhood already established, you know, with homes adjacent to each other. So you don't really have anything to compare it to. So I think there's going to be some uh, some real uh, concern there. But I I'm glad that we do have the design guidelines that we can fo uh, follow, and uh, I think it's I think it's a good idea to. You know, to streamline it to a certain extent. Uh, I don't think anyone's going to be rushing too much, but uh, I believe to to ease the pain, not have them pay for permits and things, but uh, to but still maintain our our uh, our level of scrutiny and quality, still help. Anyone else? I agree. We're and this is not just the the first uh, you know situation that this catastrophe is. Has uh, caused. It's um, we're in uncharted territory in a lot of ways in this city now. This is just one of them. But I believe, uh, as we've done in the last, you know, 11 or so weeks, uh, we've gotten through it and we'll get through this too. So I look forward to the rebuild. I really do. It should be uh, a, a very exciting and uh, an emotional experience for everyone. So uh, anyone else? Action by the council. With that, I'd uh, make a motion to waive the first reading. Second. Motion and a second to waive the first reading. On the question, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. And, uh, Would Mr. someone like to introduce the ordinance? Mr. Mayor, I'd like to introduce the ordinance for adoption. Excuse me? Introduce the ordinance for adoption. Councilmember Ibera. Aye. Councilmember Salazar. Aye. Councilmember O'Connell. Aye. Vice Mayor Medina. Aye. Mayor Ruane. Aye. And thank you, staff, for the great job. Great job. And the Planning Commission also. 